These rap motherfuckers need to give it up and make room for the new artists. I'm tired of the same old bullshit. Saigon sparked a lighter, set our album cover on fire, dropped it to the ground along with the actual CD, and stomped it with his boot. Wow. We were in shock. We never did anything to Saigon. That clown wasn't even on our radar. He was obviously just trying to make a name for himself. It became Saigon hunting season. A few days after seeing the Smack DVD, Alchemist's brother Neil had a small birthday party in downtown Manhattan's Tribeca neighborhood. Ron Du from Queensbridge, Godfather, Gotti, Twin, Alchemist, and I were drinking Coronas in the back of the bar when Saigon walked into the spot. Oh man, here we go. The 9mm Ruger on my hip was concealed under my shirt and leather jacket. Look who just walked in, I tapped Ron Du and told him. It's Saigon. Godfather walked over and told me the same thing. Saigon spotted us staring at him, so he walked straight up to me. Yo, P, I want to apologize to you about that Smack DVD. I know you must have heard about it by now, he said, looking like a scared puppy with his tail between his legs. I'm a big fan of Mob Deep. I don't know what was wrong with me, man. I said some shit I shouldn't have said. That was some real disrespectful shit you did, man. What's up with you, man? I said. Yo, I swear I'm a fan of your shit. I love Mob Deep, he replied. Please forgive me, P. I fucked up. I could step on this clown like a roach if I wanted to, I thought. If he'd have spoken with the slightest bit of aggression in his voice, I would have snapped on Saigon. But that clown was chirping away like the bird-ass nigga he was, singing sweet songs of forgive me. Being the intelligent, compassionate person that I am, I told him, You know what? Forget about it. We all say things that we regret sometimes. Don't sweat it. We good. Listen, I just want you to know that I really love Marv Deep. Ask Alchemist. I'm your biggest fan. Saigon chirp. All right, man. Don't sweat it, I said. It's a small thing to a giant. I really am a fan. No bullshit. I felt stupid when I saw that DVD. I don't have no problems with y'all. You ain't got to explain all that. It's over. I said, we good. I'm a fan, P, he kept chirping. I'm just a big fan. Ron Du sipped his beer, staring at Saigon as he said it again. I grew up on your music. I love Mob Deep. Then Ron Du cut him off. Man, shut the fuck up and get away from us before we hurt you, nigga. There was a long silence. Saigon looked at Ron Du, looked at me, then turned and walked out of the bar. We all laughed. Come on, we can't let him walk outside after that, I told Ron Du. Let's make sure he doesn't try to ambush us. A foolish, cocky person would have laughed and continued partying because Saigon looked like a coward. But I knew better than to beef with a person and let him go outside without following him. That person could be hiding outside with a gun, waiting. So we walked outside right behind him. Yo, these dudes is fronting, son. Saigon was running his motor mouth to his boys. He turned and saw Rondu and continued his tough guy act because his boys were watching. Rondu stood in front of Saigon looking down at him. What's up, nigga? What you want to do? Rondu asked. You pussy. Yo, I ain't got no beef with y'all niggas. Back up off me. I'm trying to leave. He said with bass in his tone. Saigon's boys pulled him away. When Ron Du was in his face calling him pussy. I ain't got no beef with you, P. But I'm going to see your boy right here, Saigon said, motioning to Ron Du with his finger. Ron Du was seconds away from punching Saigon. Come on, let's bounce. I'm going to end up clapping one of these niggas, I told Ron Du. They're not built like that. Let's go. I'm not into fighting. I'm a gunman. I'm guaranteed to shoot somebody if I got my gun. A very ignorant, negative mentality, but that's just how I was. So I tried my best to avoid shit like that. I'm going to see you, nigga, Saigon screamed as we walked to my truck. I'm going to see you again. 
You soft, nigga. Shut your fucking mouth before you get hurt. Godfather shouted back. Saigon started walking slowly towards us. So I walked back over to him. Go home, man. I told you it was all good, but you keep talking, I said. You making it a problem. Your boy tried to play me. If he wants to fight, then we can fight, Saigon said. Niggas ain't trying to fight, son. I said, grabbing Saigon's left hand and tapping it on the gun on my hip. Just go home, nigga. You bugging right now. Saigon finally shut up. It was drizzling rain on the day of the Central Park concert. Slowly, our crew of seven, Hav, Fly, Rondu, Little Lord, his two boys from Monster Projects, and I made our way through three crowded police barricaded checkpoints. Security guards led us to Naza's trailer. I knocked on the door while the rest of the crew stood outside. Naza's woman, Khalees, was sitting on a counter with a camcorder in her hand, filming me as I walked in. Naz, his boys from Queensbridge, Super Ed, and Fakie were sitting around talking. Yo, what up, nigga? I greeted Naz. You don't love me no more, Naz said. Why do you think we came here? I miss doing songs with you, nigga. Yeah, right, you don't love me no more, he said, playing around. Okay, whatever, man, I said. Fakie walked over and said, Pete, we need to talk. Then a security guard knocked on the door and opened it. It's showtime. Nas and Khalees walked ahead of us so they could hurry to the stage. Walking behind them, Fakie said again, Yo, Pete, we need to talk. Putting his arm around my shoulder for privacy. Son, what you making these songs dissing worming all of us? You already know what's up with all that. Y'all did what y'all did, and I did what I did. But you thought I wasn't going to say nothing back? I said. After Build and Destroy and Ether, Nas and Fakie started saying slick shit about me on songs and being disrespectful. So naturally, I did the same to them. Now that clown Fakie was confronting me about it. <laughs> Little Lord walked over. Don't talk to that bitch-ass nigga. Fuck him. You ain't got nothing to say to him, he told me. Fakie looked over at Little Lord, then looked back at me and said, Your man here is about to get you into some shit. See, I don't got no problem with you, P, but your man here is about to cause a problem. Then Fakie stepped away from me, and he and Little started arguing. What you say, nigga? Fakie said. What you want to do? Naza Khalees were way ahead of us now heading toward the backstage gate. Fakie quickly reached in his pocket and pulled out his Nextel walkie-talkie phone and started chirping people backstage. Yo, son, these niggas think they're gangster. Get everybody together and meet me at the gate right now, he said. Huh, <laughs> nigga, please. Fakie chirped again. Hurry up and tell niggas to come to the gate now, he looked at us and said. We gonna see who tough now. When we get backstage, we'll see... Little Lord said, cool, let's see. Naza Khalees were already inside the 12 foot tall white gate leading backstage. When the security guard opened the gate for us, 20 dudes were waiting for us to walk in. Assuming that they were the dudes that Fakie was chirping, Little Lord and his two boys from Brooklyn punched the closest ones in the face, then another, then another. Everybody started brawling. Somebody slammed the gate shut behind us, locking havoc and fly outside. It was just five of us against 20. Fakie walked in before all of us and then disappeared in all the commotion. I noticed that for some strange reason, the 20 dudes and Fakie were all wearing dark green promotional t-shirts for Sean's album, Godfather Buried Alive. Sean was in prison serving 10 years for a shooting inside a Manhattan club with Puff Daddy. Fakie must have been helping promote Sean's album. So anybody with a Sean t-shirt was immediately considered an enemy and a target. As Rondu and I pushed and punched our way further inside the backstage area, Rondu looked at me, grabbed my arm, then pushed me to the side out of harm's way, shoving me right into Nas, who was watching the fight. My first instinct was to break Nas' face, 
But instead, I asked him, hey, yo, what's up with all this, man? You set us up? Nas acted like he couldn't hear me. Khalees sat on the edge of the stage, secretly filming the fight. I looked around for Fakie, but didn't see him anywhere. Suddenly, all the Shine t-shirts started scampering away. Little Lord's two Brooklyn boys had knives out, blood dripping from them. Come on, we are going. They taunted the Shine dudes, some of whom were taking their Shine t-shirts off and pressing them to their stomachs, chest, and heads to stop the bleeding. Come on. I spotted Fakie hiding behind a staircase leading to the stage. <laughs> Just as the fighting stopped, Tim Lord handed Nas a microphone and Nas began his show with New York State of Mind. Little Lord and Rondu walked over and asked if I was okay. Yeah, I said. Look at Fakie hiding behind the stairs. Pussy, they barked at him. What's up now? Fakie stayed quiet behind the stairs and just looked at us. Tim Lord walked over and gave me a microphone. He told me to wait on the staircase to get cued in. Halfway up the stairs, I yelled at Rondu. Hey, yo, where's Havoc? Get half. Five plainclothes police officers ran backstage. One of the cops grabbed a big closed umbrella from a picnic table and started swinging it between my people and Fakies in an attempt to keep them separated. Little Lord's boys from Brooklyn still had their knives out in front of the cops, and the cops looked scared and didn't do anything about it. Khalees kept filming the action backstage, then turning the camera towards Nas performing. Havoc and Fly made their way to the steps where I was sitting. Buster Rhymes and Q-Tip were standing off to the side during the whole fight. Buster walked up to me and said, Yo, y'all niggas is crazy, man. Why y'all fighting each other? I saw the whole shit. Hey, shit happens, I said. Y'all Queensbridge niggas is crazy, Buster said. Q-Tip just shook his head, gave us a pound, then ran on stage to perform the song One Love with Nas. Tim Lord gave Havoc a mic and told us we were up after Q-Tip. The only thing on my mind was, what if these niggas try to pull some bullshit while we performing? The music stopped. I want to bring out some very special guests, Nas announced as his DJ LES dropped the beat for Eye for Eye. The crowd went crazy. That was the first time we ever performed that song together, live, though we were missing Raekwon from Wu-Tang. After we performed our single, Got It Twisted, from America's Nightmare, Nas stood between Havoc and me with his arm around our shoulders, kissed us both on the cheek, and told the crowd, I love Mob Deep, these my niggas. We regrouped with our boys backstage. We gotta pay attention walking out of the park, because these niggas might try to ambush us. Little Lord said, but nothing happened. Later that night, as I told Kiki about what had happened, I wondered, did Nas set that whole shit up? Or was that just fakie? Why was Khalees taping it all? Fakie better hope Nas never released that footage, because there would be proof that he's a bird, and couldn't back it up when real niggas called his bluff. Soon after that Central Park concert, we took a few of our boys to a big DJ convention in Puerto Rico. The night we arrived, we bumped into Styles P and Jada Kiss from the Locks, and Pharrell from the Neptunes. Fabulous stepped out of limo with a large entourage and a good-looking female in a long white mink coat. He also had that kid Webb, whom we almost shot on the 4th of July with him. The woman in the mink, Gloria Velez, the famous video vixen and baby mother Aaron Hall from Guy kept peeking over at me while standing with Fabulous, who was doing an on-camera interview. I motioned for her to come over, and she did. I asked her name, as if I didn't know, and we exchanged numbers. I never met Gloria before, but called her over to show Webb that I didn't give a fuck that she was with them. Webb was watching through the large lobby window. Fabulous finished his interview and was waiting for Gloria to come back, so I kept talking to her for a little longer just to fuck with him. I didn't have anything against Fabulous. I liked him and his music. I wanted to piss Webb off for that bullshit he pulled at Club Chaos. 
While Havoc and I were being interviewed in a hotel conference room later that day, Little Lord spotted Webb and approached him about the situation.